Hey, what's going on guys? How you doing? Matt Antonelli here. Today, answering questions on the Cape Cod League. Been asked a bunch of times about the Cape Cod League. Um, a lot of people want me to go in depth, talk a little bit about it. If you don't know what the Cape Cod League is, basically it's a summer league for college players. It's um, usually known as the um, best college summer league in the country. So typically, you know, the high draft picks coming out of college, most of those guys play in the Cape Cod League. It's probably the best league I've ever played in as far as a non-professional league. It's not probably. It's definitely the best league. Um, you know, at least my years, almost every draft pick that was in the first round that was a college player played there. So really, really competitive league. Um, really fun league. It's, it's interesting because there's tons of good players, but it's also kind of a laid back league. So it's very interesting. It's on obviously Cape Cod League is Cape Cod, Massachusetts. So it was always fun for me. I'm a Massachusetts guy. So it only is about an hour from my, my house. So my family could come to all my games. Um, so really, really cool to be able to spend time close to home, but also play in such a prestigious league. The league's been around forever. Tons of draft picks have played there. Um, and so it doesn't really get much better as far as if you're a college player and you want to play professionally, that's the best, that's the league to, to play in. So players are usually selected by that. Um, you know, usually your college coach will try to hook you up with it. Um, you know, and it depends a little bit on the connections like Wake Forest. We had a really good connection where we send a lot of players every year to the league. Um, most of our players would play in Chatham. I actually was supposed to play in Chatham, but then got switched to Falmouth. And so I played two years at Falmouth, played after my freshman year of college, and played after my sophomore year of college. Um, so let's talk about the unique things about the league. First unique thing about the league is host family. So you live with a host family. You don't stay in an apartment or a hotel or anything like that. You live with a host family. So, you know, I show up and basically they just tell me, okay, this is the family you're going to live with. And so I drive to their house. I say, here's the address. Here's their name. So I pull up and... Um, Meet, meet my family that I'm going to be spending my the next couple months with. Um, the league usually goes from like June and July is basically when the league is. I think it goes into August. So you're basically there for about two months, maybe a little bit more. And so um, when I lived there, I lived with uh, a host mom, a host dad, and then I had um, basically what you call a host sister. So I lived with three people. Um, awesome family. I said this in one of my other videos because I had a host family in Lake Elsinore, California when I played in high A for the Padres. I've been very lucky in my life. I've had the greatest host families of all time. And so they were, they've all been amazing, right? So, you know, you would think it's really awkward going into a house with people you've never met before. And now all of a sudden you're basically like their kids. Um, and, um, you know, I just felt really at home. Like, you know, obviously the first day meeting them might have been a little bit strange, but after that, you just, I mean, honestly, I just felt like I was part of the family. And um, I lived there with two for two years. I played there the first year, and then I went back and stayed with the same family the second year. And so it's a really cool time. It, it adds kind of the, to the overall experience of the Cape. It's one of the things that the league is known for, living with families and getting to know families. And, and um, it really is a family-type league because, you know, so many families vacation on the Cape. And so your, your games are just filled with people that, you know, tons of families that are just down there for vacation or for their summer homes. And so, you know, they're always coming and supporting the team. And it's just a really, really cool atmosphere when you play there. So awesome host family. Again, really, really lucky to be able to spend time with them. Um, I still keep in contact with them today. Um, other interesting things about the league, at least for Falmouth, you had to work. So you don't just go there and play. You actually have to work. So my first year playing there, I worked at a place called Roach Brothers. It's a grocery store. My job was to um, basically bag the groceries for $8 an hour. So I was making the big bucks. Um, you don't get paid for playing in this league. So that's the way you make your money. And typically you're going to, you, most um, teams make you pay your host family. So it's like 50, I think it's like 50 bucks or hundred bucks a week or something to cover like food and just living expenses. My host family, um, just they were like the nicest people ever when I, I I gave them all the money and when I left my host dad actually put it all in an envelope and put it back in my car so when I got my car to leave and I was driving away all my money was right back in my envelope so I ended up paying them nothing um and you know they were amazing they cook you know my host mom would cook me food every single night like I get home from the games and I have dinner every night and you know it was basically just ridiculous you know um and so yeah, so I made eight dollars, big eight dollars an hour there. I worked every day from 
Um, I think I got in there, uh, I think the day started at 9, I think I got in at 8.30. Worked like 9 to 1 every day. So you, I'd go in, I'd bag groceries, no idea what I'm doing. I get yelled at by old ladies all day long, like, don't put that in that bag. You can't put that food with that food. And I have no clue. I'm just like, I just take the food, I throw it in the bag, whatever. Here you go. Get yelled at. Sorry. Fix it. I still have no idea. I worked there for a year. Well, not a year, two months every day. Still have no idea how to bag groceries. So once you bag them, you put them in their shopping cart, and then we'd have to push the cart out to the car, and we'd have to unload the, the groceries. So you unload the groceries, and uh, we weren't allowed to accept tips either. So, you know, you unload them, and then the people usually say, like, oh, here, here you go, son, take uh, $3 or whatever. And I say, no, ma'am, sorry, can't accept tips. And they say, oh, please, just take it. And I say, no, 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 I, I cannot take it. You can put it in my pocket if you want to, but I cannot take it. Um, actually, I never said that, but... Some people actually would. They'd be like, okay, I understand. And then they'd like try to walk around you and try to slip it in your back pocket. So I made a couple extra bucks. Um, work was, I uh, was not the best uh, grocery store bagger. Um, got talked to a couple times about not understanding what the hell I was doing, putting bags and certain stuff. The other thing is um, I actually got in trouble because I hadn't really worked before. My family owned a catering business when I was younger, when I was in high school and stuff. So the only work I really did, I always worked for the family. I'd always like wash dishes and even did that in college. And so I didn't understand how work really worked. And so I thought that I could just take a lunch break every day and realize that you can unless you work a certain amount of hours. So like the first week I would just like disappear up to the lunch room and like just eat lunch. And like a weekend, my manager came up and he's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, just eating lunch and taking my lunch break. And he's like, you don't get a lunch break. You got to work over five hours for that. And I was like, or maybe over four hours for that. And I was like, really? I got to work the whole four hours straight? And he's like, yeah. So then I ended up taking my lunch break in the bathroom. I'd just go for a really, really long bathroom break and eat lunch in there sometimes because, I don't know, I was hungry. It was nine to one. I mean, I'm hungry. I'm working in a grocery store. I see food all day long. I want to eat. So, um, so I got in trouble a little bit for that. The other secret that we would do sometimes is, you know, when you get really tired, you would take the, sh I probably shouldn't say all this stuff, but this is what some of it, it was, it wasn't just me working there. It was actually a couple other kids from our team. And so like when you get really tired, when you're like pushing the car and it's like a hundred degrees out and you're kind of getting exhausted, you would just push your, if you take the car and you just push it to the back of the parking lot, right? This parking lot was huge. You just push it all the way back there, act like you're going up and pushing it up to a car and then you just sit down for like a five minute break. Then you get up and push it back and you go back to work. So little tip, if you ever work at Roach Brothers in Cape Cod, that's what we did. Um, what else was, uh, oh, second year? Second year I worked the camps, baseball camps. So we'd run, the team would run camps every year. And so second year I didn't feel like working at the grocery store anymore. I was like now the veteran of the team. So I got to work the baseball camps, which was awesome. So basically you work like, you work a couple camps during the summer you know, the local kids would come down, young kids, little league kids, you just put them through, you know, workouts and, you know, but it's, it's fun. You play, excuse me, you play pickle with them, if you guys know what pickle is, and, you know, you play little games and you teach them how to throw and how to catch and all that stuff. And so way, way better than bagging groceries. Um, you know, you work on, the, we'd also have to work in the field. So, you know, if it was, you know, we'd, we'd rake the field and drag the field and all that stuff and line the field, line the chalk and all that. Um, and so that was so much of a better job my second year than my first year was. Um, so those are kind of the interesting things about the Cape Cod League. Um, my Cape Cod team, my first year was really, really good. We made it to the championship game. We actually lost. I'm trying to think back, we had a lot of like, so that year, Jacoby Ellsbury hit first for us. I hit second. Chad Pennington hit third. So those were all the first round picks. Fourth was like... I think Mark Hamilton was like a second round pick by the Cardinals. Um, who else? Brian Bogusevit. Um, who else? Bo I mean, we had tons, uh, tons of players. Too many players to, to name all of them. Daniel Carr was a really, really good player. Um, we ended up having like a lot of first round picks and high picks. Um, we had this Dallas Buck, who was an amazing pitcher. I really shouldn't name the players because we had so many amazing players. I can't name all of them, but we just had a ton of really, really good players that year. So many guys that went on and had really long major league careers. A lot of guys that are still playing there. Um, and, uh, we never won a championship. We lost my first year to YD, Yarmouth Dennis, Red Sox. And, um, the second year we make the playoffs. I don't really remember second year. Uh, didn't go as well as the first year, but 
Um, and then to end up just kind of the schedule, just so you guys kind of know, because I get asked that a lot about the Cape Cod League. So basically you're going to get up and work, right? Five days a week, you're going to get up, you're going to get to work by probably 8, 30, 9 o'clock, you're going to work till 1. I'd come home, I'd eat lunch. My lunch was usually terrible. I'd eat um, like those uh, ramen noodles. So I'd throw in like a ramen noodle. I'd watch, um, here's an interesting tidbit for you. I used to watch uh, Family Matters, um, Step by Step, or Full House. Those are like three shows that were on every day at lunchtime, and I like all three of them. And I still do like all three of them, even though I'm 30 something years old, 32. Um, so I'd watch those shows, eat lunch, and then I'd go down to the field. I'd get down to the field around like 2.30, 3 o'clock, hit BP, game would start at 7. You know, you'd play your game, get down at 10. You'd either go out and eat with like a buddy on the team. A lot of times I'd come home, I, my host mom would have dinner for me because she was the best. I'd eat dinner. Um, usually have to go to bed, you know, around midnight or so, 1 o'clock. Because, you know, usually I'd get home and watch maybe a Red Sox game if it was still on TV. A lot of times it was, you know, it was over. Um, maybe watch like a West Coast game. And then, um, yeah, go to bed, wake up, go back to work, do it all over again. Right. And that's kind of how our schedule went. You play a lot of games. You don't get a whole lot of off days. Um, travel's really good in that league because it's all in the Cape. So you're not driving really, really far. You're taking a school bus, basically to Chatham or Harwich or Bourne or Hyannis or, you know, there's a bunch of different places, Brewster. They're all within like a 45 minute drive typically if there's not too bad of traffic. And so that's the other cool thing about the league. And then um, on off days, I'd usually go home because I'm only about an hour away from home. So I'd go home, see my family and, um, and then get right back and start playing again. So um, hopefully that gives you an idea what the Cape Cod League is like. If you have any more questions, please let me know. I'll try to help you guys out. Um, Please subscribe to the channel if you're not done so already, and I'll keep throwing up more videos for you guys. Give us a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. Uh, share with all your friends. Check out our Instagram page, Antimo Baseball, on our Twitter feed, Matt Antonelli9, where we're posting videos every day for you guys. Uh, let's see what else. Check out the description box below, where I've got links to books I've been reading and also training tools we use with all of our players. Check out our website, AntimoBaseball.com. We have tryouts coming up soon, so if you want to try out for our team, if you're a local player, go ahead and check that out. Also, find out how to work with us. And that's all I got, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, for the questions. Hopefully it's helped you out, and we'll talk to you later.